Now we awake. Now I was, I, I don't know, right before that I was taking a nap. So I was sleepy. It's a good nap. I had drool falling off the side of my mouth. So I needed to wake myself up. It ain't nothing like old school. That'll wake you up. Yes. Yes. You know, Steve Harvey on Kings of Comedy say, you know it was song. You know the song's good when it came on. Yeah, yeah. The way it came on to tell you this song was gonna be good. This song was gonna be good. Amen. It is. You know, some of them, some of them, some of them old songs that make you want to tap your feet. You know, you young buck don't know no more. Oh yeah, buddy. But y'all, y'all grandmothers had that music playing. Chapter five. That's what we're going over today. Phil and Grace did such an amazing job. I ain't got the repeat. So we just going to keep on moving on, moving on, moving on. Anybody read chapter five? Anybody? You got the hands up? No, oh, that's all right. I'll do it in a way that will be understood. Understood. Upgrade your systems for living. That's what we're talking about. Chapter five is about upgrading your systems for living. So we talked about a whole bunch. Um, we went a whole lot of talking. And in a whole lot of talking, there was also a whole lot of upgrading. Upgrading our mind, upgraded our thoughts. Now we're upgrading the system. Let's start from somewhere in the beginning. Elon Musk has a quote, quotes in the book. It says, I think it's very important to have a feedback loop where, where you are constantly thinking about what you've done and how could you be doing it better. I think that the single best piece of advice is constantly think about how could you be doing things better and questioning yourself? I like to say that that was good advice because this book was written when, Grace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What year was this book written? I think I read it in 2017. Pay, pay, pay close attention, pay close attention. <clears throat> 2017, I believe. Should be on the front page, you know, on big pages. When was this book written? All right, somebody Google it too. <clears throat> You'll find it. 2016. 2016, so I read it in 2017, or maybe in 2016. 2016, Elon Musk was not the richest man in the world. Today, he's the first 200 billionaire to ever exist on planet Earth. Did y'all hear what I said? Elon Musk is the first 200 billionaire to exist on planet Earth as of today. He is worth $209 billion. I'd like to say he kept himself in the feedback loop, Abby. Yes, I'd like to say <laughs> yesterday he was second. Yeah, today he first. <laughs> <laughs> $24 billion more than Jeff Bezos. Would someone say he's getting good feedback? Oh, yeah. Great How many of you would like your feedback so cold it puts you over $200 billion? I know that's right. <clears throat> Let me Wait, tell you. What happened, Antonio? <laughs> Jeff, Elon Musk is worth $209 billion today. $209. Billion. He don't need to ask for 50 cents. You're saying, yeah, he 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 can spend a he can spend a million dollars a day till he dies, still have money. Ain't that something? I'll give him fifty cents. It gives me one billion. I don't know, well, you know what? Yeah. You no, know, she won. She's trying to get her return on investment. That's it. Yeah, turn on investment. Everybody says me, and you're right. You should say me. Richard Brent, Richard, Richard Branson. There we go. Richard Branson has a secret system. Sandals, I am going to have you read all of this system. I want to put it somewhere where you can see it. Let me see. Ah, a document. There you go. Words go on documents, don't they? 
Okay, make some sense here. I like this part of the book because it starts making some sense to me. So let, oh, hold on y'all. I forget. All right, there we go. You're not gonna be able to see it at first. I'm gonna have to do some changes, but you'll be all right. Okay, here we go. And then let's see if we can get some black going on. Guess we get blue going on. Okay, Grace. Get to reading. <laughs> Richard Branson's secret system. That's when it occurred to me that given that I was sitting in private conversation with one of the world's greatest entrepreneurs, Maybe I should stop discussing ways to improve sperm count and instead ask Richard for something a bit more related to his genius zone. So I asked him this, Richard, you've started eight different companies in eight different industries and taken all of them to a billion dollars. That's huge. If, if you could summarize in one sentence how you did it, what would you say? Richard didn't blink. He answered immediately. I'm going to say it like, uh, what's his name did? So immediately, uh, like a wise kind sage, here's what he said. It's all about finding and hiring people smarter than you, getting them to join your business and giving them good work, then getting out of the way and trusting them. You have to get out of the way so you can focus on the bigger vision. That's important. But here's the main thing. You must make them see their work as a mission. Keep going. This in Richard's words, in his system for starting game change, yes, is, is, is his system for starting game changing companies. His focus is on hiring smart people, giving them freedom and getting out of the way and continuously thinking of his vision, ensuring that a mission was driving the company. A system for living is a repeated optimized pattern for getting things done. How we dress in the morning is a system. How we get through our email is often a system. Our work, our parenting, our exercise routine, how we make love and handle relationships, our methods, our methods for creativity, all often fall into specific systems for living. All right now. All right, I'm gonna say some stuff now. How many of you on this call are grown? I'm I'm interested. How many grown folk we got? Just uh Phil say he just got there yesterday. All right. Since we grown, I'm going to ask you a grown folk question. I'm going to ask you a grown folk question. Is this fair? Have you upgraded your system for making love? Now you know. My mute was on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Now, <clears throat> we've all upgraded, you know. But check this out. Now that we've grown, when last time we upgraded? Huh. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just saying. You, you, you right? All right. We're going to start here, do this here. It's about the same amount of time. We're going to be finished. You finish, I finish. Let's go. All right. All that stuff. You understand? What I'm trying to tell you is, no, even even if you like it and it make you feel good, it's, you still need to upgrade it. I felt like I made a strong point. <laughs> even if it make you feel good, it still need to be upgraded. You understand? It still need to be upgraded. So there's a few things here in the middle of this. There's a few things right here. He starts break. He starts dropping his knowledge. Uh, put this in the chat for me. Richard Branson's system. We'll we'll put it in systemized steps. We'll say step one: hire hire smart people. Hire people smarter than you. Then he says. Give them good work. Oh, that one there is powerful. <clears throat> that one there is powerful. Get out the way. Okay. 
All right. You understand? As 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 as, as woke and nice as Phil, <laughs> Susan, and Monica now is, they still want you to get out their way. Help me, somebody. <laughs> you, got, you got to get out the way. You, you, you got you got to get out their way. Okay. Trust them. Uh oh. Uh oh. So you mean to tell me I can't say if you want something get done, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. That that ain't in the house. Mm, okay. 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 Yeah. If you want to be a dollar, in case you can't think like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Focus on the big. Then put put for effect. Then focus on the big vision, bigger vision. <clears throat> then focus on the bigger vision. And then lastly, make them see their work as a mission. Yeah, buddy. Make them see their work as a mission. That's why I remind you every chance we get, we end in world hunger. I, right here is where we pause. Let's talk. What have you learned? What was your favorite part? What had an impact on you? Come on, Grace, you first. Number six, as I was reading normally, I have to read things more than once so that I can comprehend. But when I was reading his system, all six are, are really wonderful, are really good. Because if you can get eight different companies and eight different industries to a billion dollars each, yeah, your system works. But that number six, of course, yeah, you have to get out of the way and, and, and trust people because I can, can't tell you how many times Antonio has trusted me and I'd be like, why? Well, but he still does. <laughs> but that number six, make them see their work as a mission because when he when he found what seat to put us on on the bus, what our right seat was on the bus, then yeah, he saw okay, this is this is where you this is where your gift is. You need you need to be here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you need to be in sales right here. Deanna, no, not you. Sales, you don't. That's not you. So that's not you. That, you don't like that. So let me go find what you do. What you do? What you like doing? And and when he did that, it, all six of these things he has he has done with us. So yeah, that number six is powerful. It is. It sure is powerful. Let me tell you something. Somebody build eight one billion dollar plus businesses. They follow in the system. You don't accidentally get right eight times. Okay, you know you don't do that. Who's next? What have you learned? What impacted you? Go ahead, Daoud. Um, I think that if you, by securing the first two ones, like uh, surrounding yourself with, with with people smarter than you and giving them good work, mm -hmm. I, you don't have to focus on, you don't have to worry about trusting them. You can just let them roll with it and let them, you know, do what they need to do because you've already hired these smart, competent people and have surrounded yourself with it, you just give them the, the mission, the blueprint, and then they can go ahead, which means that you now have free time to focus on the bigger goal, but also what other industries you can disrupt. So by you already, you know, surrounding yourself with, with smarter people, it gives you more time, which you then can leverage to strategize how you're going to build the company. And like I said, again, disrupt other industries. It saves you time and saves you energy by having the right people on board. So I thought that was really smart and strategic here. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. And you allowed me to ask one of my favorite questions that I asked myself in my head. Is busy work good work? Mm. Mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can look busy working. Yeah. Anybody can look busy work, but what about managers that just give you busy work? You should have been off. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. Right? You should have been off, and now they got you just running around here doing busy work. We've all been there before, haven't we? It, now, what does that say about that organization? If that organization don't have nothing good for you to do, that organization need to be fixed at the highest level. How many of you are running around in your own companies doing busy work? When you don't have a large mission, let's feel big, hairy, audacious goal. 
when you don't have a world changing mission, when you don't set a defining moment for that day, Abby, you only wake up being busy, not productive. And most of you today were busy. Didn't give yourself good work. Mm, 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 mm. That's so cold. Go ahead. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, Renita. Um, Antonio, also to add to the busy work, sometimes it's redoing things over and over and over again. So it's like this month, we're doing it this way. And then next month, we're changing to do it this way. And then the month after that, we're putting it back to the way we did it the first month. So it's like they're trying to create things to do, just to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's, some, that's, that's a business ain't going nowhere. That's a business <clears throat> maintaining the status quo. Exactly. If you keep maintaining the status quo, inflation alone going to get you. Mm. Well, somebody like Phil going to take your customers. Because <laughs> you wouldn't treat them right. It's gonna let me tell you what some let me let me tell you what's gonna happen in the near future. In the near future, Phil and Susan Sorrentino gonna see virtual reality coming. And they're gonna find a way without coding to find themselves virtually connoting in the middle of your video game. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> when uh, you gonna look up, it's gonna be an ad. It's gonna be them. <laughs> Would you like to take a break and get connotes while you're in here, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, somebody <laughs> they go figure out how to how to turn virtual reality into personal development. And that whole time, you was just keeping the status quo of having your clients in the real world. They had already moved on. To the new real world. If you're not going after good work, somebody will pass you up. It's, it's fair. It's fair. All the people who treated TV like the new radio, radio with pictures, they all got passed up by the time it's got caught on. I'm, I'm not talking like color TV, I'm talking about John Wayne. And them, them classic movies. They all got passed up. Grace, go ahead and do me a favor. Repeat those, that Richard, Richard Branson system all at once. We got people coming on. Richard Branson has a system. He says, hire smarter people than you. Give them good work. Get out their way. Trust them. Then focus on a bigger vision. Make them see work. Make them see their work as a mission. So I won't go through each one of my six, but it is one more I want to go through. And it's something I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn to stop being the smartest person and the hardest worker in my business. And that was hard. Mm -hmm. Come on, Deanna. I'm finna put my weight all over this too, y'all, just so you know. Go ahead. Yeah, come on. How does one not be the hardest worker in their business? See? And I do, I, I do understand that it's all I know it's a mindset thing. I know it's a thought process. That is like the hardest thought to shift. <clears throat> Like that's the hardest decision to make that I am not going to be the hardest working person in my business. Like that's the one rule that is hard to break. Who says, I mean, the question is flawed in itself. Who says Renita can't catch your vision and work harder than you in your business? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That makes some sense. That was deep. That was deep. <laughs> right? I, I had to learn how not to be the hardest work in my business 
and not be the smartest one in my business. Came right to the army. What did the army do? Need to know. So if I didn't need to know, they ain't tell me. So what did my business start looking like? Need to know. <laughs> so if you ain't need to know, I ain't do you. <laughs> I, Abby, the first days, I never cast a vision. I just told you what you was going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hear what I'm saying? I never, I never cast a vision on the trees. I just said, this is what we're going to do. You say, okay. Y'all know what I'm saying? Essentially, let's, let's look at his number five. I'm, I'm, the re I'm setting up number five. Then it says, then focus on the bigger vision. If, not now, since Deanna asked the question, I'm going to make it towards, I'm going to do, I'm going to answer Deanna's question with a real thing that happens every day that she misses every day if diana wasn't smarter than me i'd show up to all her meetings <laughs> diana has at least 12 meetings a day i never show up to even even podcast interviews for my brand with my name on my podcast Mm -hmm. Y'all should see her face right now. <laughs> it's right under, right under her nose. Didn't even know. You, you talk to Phil and Susan and all the top leaders. I never show up. I don't. And then you talk to Monica and and Grace, and I never show up. Why? Because that's your smart time, and I don't need to be there. Did I hear what I said? How can I focus on the bigger vision if I'm always trying to be smarter than Deanna? I'm, I am talking in this place. How can I focus on the bigger vision if I'm always trying to make sure she's smart enough not to mess up my baby, which is the company, right? What? <laughs> yeah. This is my baby. Don't mess up my baby. Right, this is my baby. So now, time you can't do nothing. <laughs> it's real talk. If every time I got on one of Samuel's calls and listened for quality control, mm. seven o'clock in the morning for me, ain't no way in the world I'd be able to do a morning meeting at eight. Y'all hear what I'm saying? No, this is this is real. I'm I'm, I'm making it entertaining, but it is real. It is real if you have to be the smartest person in your business every time people can't cast their own vision inside your vision. If you have to be the smartest person in your company every time people can't cast their own vision inside of your vision. See, it is Susan's job to go, and Tony, oh, you know, I was thinking something. And that thought be allowed to go unhindered. And believe me, Susan is always thinking something, y'all. Let me just tell you, <laughs> that is the truth. Go ahead, Grace. So when Susan says, you know, I, I thought of something, that's casting her vision in your vision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, especially when they say, you know what, I think we should do this. That's exactly, explicitly casting her vision in my vision. Like law creating the whole class. Law creating the whole class. Wouldn't even be no esoteric class. Wouldn't even be no real estate class as consistent now as what is now. Because I'm not the smartest person in the company. Not the hardest working person. Uh-oh, let me address that. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Hardest working person. As much as you think Man, ain't nobody gonna work harder than you. It, it, listen, we're gonna say it. We're gonna say it. You, you, you're gonna say it from a leadership perspective. You're gonna say, you know what? This is the human consultants. Thank you so much, Monique, for being the assistant to speakers. <laughs> I thank you so much. And in his head, he's gonna be thinking, but I gotta work harder than her, not out of ego, but out of this is leadership, leadership is out front. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
and then wrong time. But the business is only ever going to grow. Human consultants is only ever going to grow when Phil pull up one day to the office and he ain't the first one there. Can I make some sense here? And them Toyota Corollas is out there. You know, and them, and them Honda Civics, you know, all that stuff like that. When Phil pull up, I got you. When Phil pull up and he ain't the only, ain't, ain't the last one to leave, ain't the first one there. And all those cars, the car notes get paid by the company, by his company, but it's by their hard work. That right there, as pretty just said, that's when he made it. <clears throat> Give you one more example. Kobe Bryant, you've heard of him, yes? Yes. Uh, rest with your ancestors, Mrs. Bryant, as we hit your one year anniversary. Kobe Bryant stayed in the gym longer than anybody. The owner was home at the house. You ain't built the Los Angeles Lakers until the greatest Laker ever is still in the gym. Chris, it's your turn now, sir. It's your turn now. I'm uh, still trying to. No, 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 I can't. I can. <laughs> Golly, you gonna drop the mic like that? But um, I think what that's all great. But the biggest issue I think is gonna happen is people's programming. Yeah. Because people will be like, I don't want to be that person because I feel mm -hmm. like I'm lazy, or I, they come from a background of hard work and traditional blue collar workers. And I can't understand that. So I just want to go ahead and bring that up because uh, I guarantee people are listening to that. But that, I guess you say the policeman in the back of the head gonna probably start saying like, no, this is not the way to do it. So it's two major things there that I'm gonna focus on. Let's first focus on the programming because that's the easiest only because I've been like smacking on the face with programming <laughs> since November, <laughs> like not every day. But it's going to be easiest to address because of that. Yes, your program when we kick in, but that's why we're doing this, Abby. That's why I'll be talking about Code of Extraordinary Mind. Ch chapter two was about, every chapter was about programming. The, 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 that stratosphere, the that ecosphere, whatever sphere he called it. And then you had the bruise. You had to update, you know, your thinking. And, now we, and then I forget what chapter four was. Now we're updating the system. So the easy part is keep updating, y'all. Does that make sense? Now, that second one, I want to I want to spend a little time on. Hardworking, blue collar, is what he said. Come on, Monica, let me hear from you. Mm -hmm, we coming back to that. Sorry, I actually pushed it a few times, but no, I was gonna say I think the hardest one is the one you you mentioned about um, the hard worker. And I think yep. that's both in the entrepreneur world and if if you guys if anybody's still working in like corporate world because for me that was a challenge that I had for a long time because when I was a general manager my assistant general manager did ten times the work I did he had ten times the responsibility I, well Patrick you know Patrick yeah um, yep. and I felt guilty because I knew I was getting paid way more than he was I was staying I wasn't at the gym as long as he was um, doing all these different things, but it was hard for me. And I would stay longer just out of guilt, um, to help. So I think the hardest part is having to realize that, that that's supposed to be that way, I guess, because I went through that too. I went through his position at one point to get to where I was. So I went through that grind, but I think once I got to a general manager position, it was hard for me to transition and let go of a lot of the responsibilities that I had, but I realized I was, I was, stunting his growth by not giving him additional things that he should have been doing because then he wouldn't be able to grow into that position later on. So you're actually hurting that person, not realizing it. And I think that's when I was able to shift. So I think it, it works in both worlds and not matter what, and that, that was the hardest thing for me. So when you said that, I was like, yep. Yeah, that's no, I'm, I'm glad you reinforced that because I was actually going to kind of brush over that and, and not bring that up. But there you go. You can't get here without going through some of this stuff. And if it was not for Monica and her increased authority, 
she got so busy mentally that she had to cast aside some of her managerial authorities. Therefore, Patrick got the brunt of that. The higher you go up, the more your job is about managing egos and mental gymnastics. It just is. Yep. It just is. It just is. Now, <clears throat> keep it in that same energy. Chris said, blue collar. That tells me what kind of much money you make, don't it? <clears throat> tells me hard working. Tells me what kind of money you make. Why? Because hard work does not translate to money. Uh-oh. I hear you, brother. I hear you. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> hard work don't translate to money. Darren said in chat, new to the family, like the mindset that everyone stays in the knowledge of shit. Yes, sir. Appreciate you see it. Now, <clears throat> hard work does not translate into income. It does not translate into money. The hard, let, let me tell you something. If hard work translated into money, all y'all grandmothers and grandfathers okay. would be billionaires. billionaires. And you would have been heirs of billionaires. Because I'm talking to what they would call regular people, ain't I? If your grandmother or grandfather or someone in that age or above them had to clean toilets just so you can go to school, would you raise your hand, please? Uh-huh. There's a few of us. There's a few of us. If your folk <clears throat> had to cut grass and start landscaping buildings because they had no social security number in this nation whatsoever hard work strawberry fields uh, you know all, all that under the under the table money just so you can go to college would you raise your hand you, you get what i'm saying listen i do this i give every example all day long because all of y'all are here on the benefit of hard work of other people. And I'm not talking about random other people. I'm talking about in your family. You understand? They in your lineage, your line. Go ahead, Chris. So while you were talking and brought up something else that I know probably not people want to say, but I'll go ahead and say it is we can hear a person like you speaking of this. But then they're like, I know I need to do this, but I don't want to be cast as acting just like them. Because that was one of the biggest thing, especially when it comes to our culture, not just trying to stick it just to our culture, but I guarantee in other people's as well, is they don't want to be cast as the black sheep because they're trying to progress, elevate, and now they're tossed as the bad guy on their way to progression because they're acting like the opposite of that they're not are or what they want to be. So allow me to come back to tribal thinking, okay? Would you write it on the board? Do whatever you do, send it to me. Tribal thinking, remind me to come back to that. Now, um, pay. oh, yes, go ahead. Okay, so we just talked about this. So my question is, how do you get out of it? So number two, give them good work um, and then get out the way. So I, I am ready to throw this whole business on I'm sorry, I mean, I'm ready to throw this whole, these whole business on the back of other people, okay, so I can be free to go, you know, focus on bigger things, like the order that is set up, and actually, um, Sir Richard Branson is my, um, I don't know, one of my avatars or something like that, Good. so how do you get from you doing all this busy work, right, it's not it's productive but not as productive and then there's it's so much of a lack of order that it's hard to even pass i don't have the right structure like the sops and all this stuff in place the systems in place to be able to even give quality work from out of my head yeah to the people who is helping me so how do we get how do we get from where I am today to functioning at this level? Absolutely. And I'm fine. She blessed y'all. It is a really good question. 
It's a really good question. Y'all hear? She blessed y'all. Because guess who know the answer? I know the answer. And let me bless y'all real quick. You write down this acronym that I got. I've never taught the team this here, but I scream it in their ear every day. O I P A. Only income producing activities. Only income producing activity. I bust their chops every day. Every day. Shaquita, question back to you now. How many activities have you performed today that were not income producing? And there lies the answer to your question. A lot of activities <laughs> that were not income producing. Yeah. Listen, y'all, we get caught up. So this is a perfect time. Adrian, you feel me? This is the perfect time to bring up the loved it, loathed it list. It's coming, it's, it's coming right after this here. It's a, such a perfect time. Such a perfect time. Yeah, listen to me. You get caught up doing activities that benefit you none. You got stuff done, but you kept yourself in the rat race. And you gotta be, you gotta listen, you, you gotta be clear with this, you gotta be slick because. What'll happen is other people will give you activities that actually hurt your future. Mm, 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 mm. They want Listen. you to feel lucky. You done made me, yep. you done made me walk into the bathroom now. That's a, yep, you right there. Listen, I need y'all to get this. I get that. I, I'll give you, and listen, it, it's not that they, some people do it on purpose. It's, you don't even notice it because you're not focused on, that's why I put that O in front of it. Only income producing activities. Pay attention. This, is, this was the answer to the question. That question she asked was good, wasn't it? The answer I gave it wasn't in no book. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm, I'm trying to tell you only income producing activities. And if you're doing something that's not an income producing activity, you're going backwards but I need to get that done. No, you don't. If you make income, you can pay somebody to get that done. Well. <laughs> <laughs> if you focus on income, you can pay somebody to get that done. Let's, let me, hold on, let me, I feel that I want to, I want this drum to fall off. I don't even want, I don't want to beat it. I want, to, I want it to fall off. Yeah, 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 y'all listen to me. It's gotta be income. And it has to produce that income. See, I didn't say income earning activities because you'll sit there and you'll trade time for money. I said, whatever you're doing needs to produce income. Do you understand? Yeah. Sometimes an income producing activity is you sitting there quiet, reading that book for two hours so you can get you a new skill set so you don't waste the whole day. <laughs> okay. <Great. laughs> I got Grace's whole head messed up. Sometimes I got you, Chris. This is something everybody can talk right here. Everybody can talk right here. Sometimes some of y'all go eight hours averagely. And if you'd have read that doggone book somebody recommended you for the first two hours, you understand? You'd have had a six hour productive day that would have passed up your whole year. Okay. Grace, Chris, Darren, and then everybody else. Uh, 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 I heard you. I heard you. Uh. <laughs> Brittany say, OIPA for life. <laughs> Go ahead, Grace. Does Rick Kelly be Reverend? I tell you every day, you'll be listening. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. So if I talk to you and say, hey, Reb, because if I call him Reb, it'll be Reb. I, I, I'm going to read this, the profiteer's book for two hours so I can really get my skill set up and get skill set up so I can become more productive to have only income producing activities. You're going to be like, okay. Yes, I'm going to be like, okay. 
because that is what billionaire leaders do and millionaire leaders do. And every time, y'all, I'm the one who forced. I say, slow down, Grace. Read this. And you go, ugh. Oh, my God. Watch this video. Ah, I don't have time. You and Monica are good for it. I don't have time. I got to make calls. You better make those calls first, Grace. <laughs> okay, okay, Monica. Okay, I'm telling you, because I'd be like, he go, oh, my God. He's going to chop my head off. It was a bad day, because I ain't make oh. If you, what you're doing is, it, it, it's, it's, that, it's that parable of the 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 two people who was chopping down trees and one guy just never stopped chopping. Yeah. And then and he said, I'm gonna beat him, I'm gonna beat him. And of course he got passed up by another guy who stopped every every 15, every 45 minutes and sharpened the axe. Yeah, yeah, out here working with a dull axe. I'm gonna throw the axe. It's I t- as soon as the queen asked y'all question, asked the question, I said she blessed y'all. Because I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what it was. When this girl asked that question, I understood that she was doing activities that did not produce income. But not just that. You got to be watching. You got you to be, you be careful here. Don't forget there and that bleed next. You got to be careful. Because people have put you in their dreams so you don't live yours. Oh, say that one more time. Please, oh say it one that more time. Yeah. I need to hit the mic. Hit the mic. Mic check. <laughs> <laughs> People have put you in their dreams so you don't live yours. You sit, I, I dare you to go out there and buy a truck and see how many people want you to move furniture the next day. <laughs> crazy <laughs> alright let me get Derry then Chris because Chris on fire he ready to speak Chris can't, he, Chris can't hold his view go ahead there. okay I appreciate it so just make sure I'm clear and um, so when we do our IOPA task I just named it IOPA I like Good that. to me. <laughs> okay so when we do our IOPA task then I, it can it can be either directly related to uh, income or profits or indirectly, correct? It's but we have to be producing profit, absolutely. Yeah, but we have to be cognizant of the task and make sure that, that the task that we're doing is going to render the results that we want, correct or incorrect. That's right. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. What's, what's, in, what's understood in his uh, rationale there is you can't be cognizant of a task if you ain't set one. If you ain't set a goal, how are you gonna have tasks? Oh my yes, <laughs> yes. Right. I love yeah. it when you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's understood in what he said. In order for you to have tasks, you gotta have a target. And if you ain't set no target, you ain't got no task. There ain't no sense you been you ain't cognizant of nothing. You just meandering through your day, and you and then listen, and then you go to bed tired because it takes the same amount of energy to focus on non-income producing activities than it do to focus on income producing activities. If you're gonna go to bed tired, you might as well go to bed rich. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? There is a there is a clip on Wolf of Wall Street. I still can't I still can't finish the movie. I can't finish the movie because if, if I, I I I would play the movie for y'all right now so you can see it, but then class is gonna be over because I can every time it, 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 I, we gonna have to skip the scenes so I can see the rest of the movie because it, it, Leonardo DiCaprio he should have won an Oscar for that movie. Good to pick up the phone and start dialing. And so he just keeps going. And I can't, I'm getting uh, pumped up right now because I I started in business cold call. Well, I started finally understanding business cold calling. I finally started getting it. And he kept saying, pick up the phone and start dialing. And then right before that, he says, I'm happy that I have problems. And I, because I'm rich, at least I show up to my problems in a $20 million house. And I agree with that. I do. 
Lisa Nichols says it this way. She says a little prettier. Everybody got to cry. You might as well cry in the BMW. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, it, it makes sense it, it, there's a book that says that this world man's life is short and few and full of trouble so if you know it's full of trouble you might as well get paid for it say that one more time Robin. <laughs> man's life is short it is full of trouble. So if that's the case, get paid for it. This is just how my brain works. I'm telling y'all, you might as well get paid for it. Come on, Chris. That was a whole mouthful. <laughs> but I think uh, what it really comes down to, because I, from my own personal experience, I had to get away from people to try to give me, like you were saying, other activities. And it used to anger me when I knew that I should take time to read certain books to acquire those new skills. But I think what is happening is like, because of the environment that you're in of like a traditional blue collar worker or they don't understand how to think of the wealth or taking advantage of the assets and much more that they throw on to you what they think is right. And then if you know that you're on to the right pathway but they're throwing their dead weight onto you or like whatever junk onto your garden and now you're tr trying to carry all that dead weight <laughs> to trying to pursue <laughs> uh, to your own where you're trying to go in your destination so i think the biggest thing is um protecting your mind and environment to actually get where you need to go because people who don't understand is always going to challenge you and that's why i'm almost on your test yes <laughs> <laughs> yes everything you say is facts well, you know, people be challenging you for no reason. They just challenge you because they programmed to challenge you. Noah said the exact same thing you said in chat. He just said in chat a few minutes ago, you're saying the same thing. He said, you spent four hours chopping out trees. I just spent three, you know, chopping in my axe. You, you, you know, it's, it's the same thing. If you focus on income producing activities only, you can staff out that stuff in your life you don't like. Y'all, there has been, it's, I'm gonna say this, I'm saying this because I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, you know, if you stretch somebody's mind, it can never go back to the size it was. You, you know what I'm saying? You put a wrinkle there, it, it can't unwrinkle itself. A wrinkle would be a new thought. I'm gonna tell you something. To my best knowledge, <clears throat> then I'm gonna get you, Grace, I'm gonna ask you a question. And then I'm gonna go back to, I mean, then I'm gonna do the load, the love, the loaded list, and then I'm gonna do, <clears throat> and do the travel thinking. I want to stretch your brains, everybody, to my best knowledge. And, and don't you fall asleep or scroll, stop scrolling Facebook real quick, and then you can go back to scrolling. Okay, go back to scrolling. <clears throat> I know you're multitasking. Yeah, fingers don't know what to do; they don't know how to be still. To my best knowledge. It has been since, this is 2021, 2010, yes, 2010 is the last, so from 2010 to 2021, that's 11 years, yes. for the last 11 years of my life, every time I went to sleep, I got a new paycheck, I swear on my life. <clears throat> on the on the on um, my life. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm here and I'm mad because you know I'm right here with this and today <laughs> is my day to do my podcast. So I'm like uh, not really where I need to be, but I'm doing what uh, you're talking to me, bro. You understand? So can can you please send me? <laughs> I'm still saying it. Like I'm trying to tell you, I say it in tears, bro. Like, but I thank God for you because tomorrow, like this evening, when I listen to it, everything that you guys are about to say is going to speak words into my life. Because trust me when I tell you that this is a toil. This is, is this is this is my this is my struggle. This, this is it, right? Of 
It takes a lot of life force to be broke, y'all. Antonio. Yes, ma'am. What if you're in a situation like mine where you want to you want to break out, you want to start, you know, you want to expand your your life to a point where you are making you're only dealing with income producing activities. That's right. You know, but the opportunities are not coming fast enough or or the opportunity is not coming fast enough. And so you find yourself still doing the things that you kind of loathe, but you wish you could give to somebody else to you wish you could delegate to somebody else. Yep. If you just had the income to be able to support hiring somebody else to do yep. those non-income producing question. activities. It's a very good question. Does anybody understand her question? It is, it is equally a question as equally as powerful as Jaquita. What if it ain't coming fast enough, which is already flawed there, okay? But I'm acting like it's not flawed, okay? And I keep doing what I loathe, but some reasonable reason to keep doing it. You understand? Abby and anyone else with this problem, that risk you are not taking is killing you. End of answer. <laughs> it's the truth. Listen, listen, it's in the question. This is, this is where actively listening comes in. I keep doing what is mediocre, but you got all these visions and all these ideas, every last one of you, and you haven't built a new stream of income because you haven't taken a new risk. I, I'm, I'm making sense today. I'm making sense today. You know, whenever you ask a question, you, you, you know that that's my like natural living place is in q &A. That nap did you good. <laughs> it sure did. It sure did. I started at 445 too. I had to go lay down. I had to go lay down. That's different. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. My my brain wouldn't cut off last night, and it was just all sorts of stuff. So I figured I'd go to sleep here, and I did. I did. I I, I need you to get that ain't nothing that be said wrong, and nothing Jaquita said wrong. In Jaquita's case, too many activities. Cut them down. Somebody asked me a question the other day. I forget who. Oh no, it wasn't even this. It was on another another show. Deanna had me on. They said, "Well, can you tell us about your morning, Mister Smith?" And can you tell us what is, what is a millionaire doing in the morning? Would y'all like to know what I do in the morning? I'm gonna give y'all my stuff in the morning. Okay. Seven, by seven o'clock, I done already dominated. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm up. First thing I do is I say thank you. I know that sounds like I'm supposed to say it and it's on a Hallmark card, but I get it from my grandmother. <laughs> How many of y'all had that grandmother? As soon as they got up, you fool around, walk by one day, you had to use the restroom. You walk by, you saw him praying. You smell coffee and the coffee was in the house. You smelt it and, 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 and the anointing was in the air. How about that? I'm, I'm, I need some real folk now. I need some praying folk. Okay now. Do you understand? Okay. All right, all right. What, what, I told you get Dawood on. What, what, what Dawood told you was doing? I'm finishing up my prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand you can't like, get in trouble? When you start your day off with prayer, that's a whole different story. I ain't gonna bother y'all. I just would, but when when you send God before you and say, "Get rid of all that stuff," so I don't even know what's happening. I, by three o five, I'm done with my thank yous. Don't take, take me long. From three three o five, I say, even if I lay on my back, I just keep saying thank you. I'm not lying. Three o five, I get up. I don't even brush my teeth. You know the first thing I start doing? Uh oh. Did that kill the internet? <clears throat> Hold on, let me switch over here. We had a light flicker. Hold on. I know, but I can't, I, as a speaker, can't take a chance. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. all I was going to do is kill, a, kill the internet. And <laughs> Come over here for me, Grace. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. Look at it. It's still flickering. Hold on, y'all. Let's see. She finna, she finna tap me off. All right, so I'll keep talking while she's doing this here. But what, what was I? It was good. Wherever it was, it was strong. 305, thank you. Oh, 305. I say thank you. Soon as I get up, I read. Right after, right after 305, I. Hold on. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. Right after 305, the first thing I do is I start reading. Chris, I need to get back to that. Ain't no social media. Mm-hmm. Most of y'all, you get up, you check your phone. Not me. <clears throat> I get up. I it, it, Listen, it, it's most quiet time. It's most impressive time. But I'm not even doing it for that. That's that's like the side effect. That, that That's oops, I accidentally applied size, right? Is it oops by accident? That ain't what I'm doing. What I'm doing is sharpening that axe, like Noah said. Yeah. Grace, tell them how I, I only tell them how I buy books, Grace. Yeah, listen to this. And Antonio only buys books to take him to the next level and to make him money. I don't buy no other books. Yeah. He, no fiction. Say it again, Grace. <laughs> uh, well, see, so, so when I want to relax, then I buy fiction, and it's James Patterson typically. You know what I'm saying? And that would be, well, you got to know how many books I read a, a month, which is going to be, yeah, I'm not going to believe it. Grace, to your best knowledge, how many books? How many books do you see me read a month? Thirty. Absolutely, I read somewhere between thirty and forty books a month, and I promise you, that's the truth. I promise you, that's the truth. That's crazy! Wow, and it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But listen to my morning schedule and watch the advantage that I have. Okay, so now, and and, and this typically in the morning, what I do, I read for a whole hour. I won't stop till four. I go from thank you to somebody smarter than me talking to me. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> DM still said. This is so now four o'clock. I'm ready. So what I do at four, I go brush my teeth. Five minutes. You, you know what I'm saying? Guess what I do when I finish brushing my teeth? I go read again. This time I got an option. I can make it an audio book or a YouTube video. I have an option this time. All 2019, you know what that second video was? I mean, that, that, that after I brushed my teeth, Gary V. I just, I just get right up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I got Gary V telling me what I need to do next. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, okay? I, I get to alternate. I gave myself some wiggle room of what reading looks like. Since now we got so much high quality, I, if I would like read, I would listen to Antonio. Teach me one of these classes at four o'clock in the morning. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now it's five o'clock. Ask me what I do at five. I gave myself an option. If I feel like going back to sleep, I'm going to go back to sleep. If I feel like working out, I'm going to work out. If I feel like reading, I'm going to read. Literally, or my morning routine, it says, do what you want, as long as it's productive. I'm not lying. Why did I schedule that that way? Because I don't like rules. <laughs> if my morning routine is so rigid and rule-like, I ain't going to do it, because I don't like rules. Me and Phil don't like rules at all. I see you, Darren. I'm coming to you. Right? You, you get what I'm saying? So now, I do something productive. Six o'clock, guess what I do? Go back to read. I, I am not joking. Sometimes it's the same book and I clobber it. If it's an audio book, I put it on 2.5. You understand? I, could, I, got, my, I got my ears trained to hear on 2.5. That, that, yeah, that, that, that's the speed. Because I'm not here to enjoy a book. I'm here to devour it. I'm not talking about speed. I'm saying... Put the book in the bowl, give me a spoon, and I'm food all over here. Like I'm just eating the book. I ain't I ain't came here to be pretty. You you taking notes. I'm already building a plan. So here you are. How many of y'all you get a book and it's a whole process for you? You got your, you, you gotta get your highlighting right. And you you know what I'm saying? You gotta get this all right. Get this all right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why you read one book a month. <laughs> right? <laughs> why you read? <laughs> why you read one book about? I came here to kill. <laughs> I need the info. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to feel good that I got the info. I need my harvest to become good that I got the info. Reverend, I like that. 
I came here. I came here. Go, go ahead, because you were responding. I'm going to get down. <clears throat> okay, you are a whole lot different. But what I'm saying is, because I have to read more than once to comprehend. So for people like myself, what do you suggest? So if I were you, first off, get rid of those limitations. But I'm not even going to bother you. I'm going I'm to accept that that's fact. So you know what I'm going to do? Well, so let me finish my schedule. Don't, don't move. Six to seven is all read. Seven, I head to the office. You understand? <clears throat> when I get to the office, I'm only doing four things for the rest of the day. What? Nope. I only make four decisions for the rest of the day. I'm going to say it again because y'all need to hear it. I only make four decisions for the rest of the day. They're called defining moments. that never goes. I take four major tasks that if I complete these things, it would fundamentally change my business or me. And I put them down for that day. Y'all make 4,000 decisions. I make four. There's a thing called decision fatigue. And those four things are income producing. I'm, t- I'm trying to tell y'all. I am incredibly. How, how Antonio, how did you turn Deanna in two books? Because I, one of those things was write book. Do you know how easy it is to write a book after you just read one? Oh. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Real talk. It really is. So back to you now, Grace. Those, so those four things, those are my dominant tasks for the day. Today, one of those things for me, well, I can't tell you that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find that one out to me, right? You can't find that one out to me. Another one is, I can't tell you nothing. Everything I did is all top secret to me. So I can't tell you nothing. I'll give you an example of things, okay? An example of things is last week Dana told me to come up with 22 books. One of my thing was make sure you do 24. And I didn't know how I was going to accomplish that because I didn't feel like doing 22. But by the end of that week, guess what? I had turned in two books in January. Before January over, I will more than likely turn in two more books. All right, here go. Now, Grace, if I were you, if I had my schedule, you allow me to be you, but be me. That would be, I would read the same book three times till I got it. Three o'clock, read a chapter. Four five, reinforce that chapter. Five o'clock, reinforce that chapter. You understand what I'm saying? Or six o'clock, reinforce that chapter. You, you get it? Yeah. yeah. Who said that? Like the goal is to the goal is to dominate. It is to accomplish. It is to devour the information. And if you need three times to devour, why are you not doing three times? So what, what is she doing? She's doing an income producing activity with no income producing spirit. Wow. Wow. <laughs> go go ahead, Darren. This on you. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Okay. Okay, so let me digest that. <clears throat> but my comment has nothing to do with what you <laughs> I know you raised your head a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I apologize. So I, I am a I'm a content creator for small businesses. Okay. And in doing this this content creation, I have to um, evaluate keywords, you know, I have to do their their um their their market analysis. There's a lot of tedious things that go into, you know, um, having a um, strategic marketing plan for them. So um, a lot of this shit I don't want to do. <laughs> so what I do is, I understand. I, yeah, I often um, uh, farm it out to like Fiverr and I have these guys bid on things like um, uh, changing product description so we don't get that duplicate content so it's more favorable mm-hmm. for and all of this stuff. So I said that to say that 
there are tasks that we don't want to do, but there are people out there who would actually do them for you. You just have to find out where they are and they'll do it for, they will actually fight for your contract. You just say, hey, I need to get done and, and um, I will charge, I'm offering $40 for somebody to do it. They will fight for that. So the, the, the manpower is out there, you just got to find it. That's right. That's absolutely correct. That's and a good, that was a, yes, ma'am. Can we add a um, Filipino outsourcing arm to our uh, ATS arm branch? <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you keep screaming at me to get that done, I, it'll happen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to text you every day. Every day at 3 a.m. You're going to wake up to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. I'm not mad at you at all. Yeah, listen, my my, I don't have a mentor, but my audience, my customers are my mentor. You understand what I'm saying? Like I'm not above mentoring. I'm saying at this point, y'all my mentor. So if she keeps saying, if she say it two or three times, I'd be like, Diana, how can we get this done? <laughs> like, this is what I do. This is exactly what I'm gonna do. Like, real talk. Right now in my in my Audible library, Audible says, and I'll show it to you. Audible says I have two hundred and eighty books. Y'all see it? Mm-hmm. And they just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Digitally on my computer, I got a 30,000 book library. What'd you just say? I have 30,000 books, digital books on my computer. Absolutely. And as my life changed, my books have changed. Bro, that means you've been reading, you've been 30 books a month for 30 years. (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. No, I have, I have, I started off when I first started tracking, I was reading about 200 pages a day. So if a book is 200 pages long, for me, that is, or for, for old me, that was a day. So I really walk around with the book all day and just devour this book. Okay. New me, it's ridiculous. You don't want to know. And it just it's going to be too distracting if I tell you how long I've taken 200-page book. And let me tell you, I'm not missing a single detail. Not, not consciously. If I am, this is something I'm supposed to miss. But I'm getting it. I'm getting it in because man cannot solve a problem that his consciousness has created says Albert Einstein. Do you understand? And, w- and what do I do? Remember, my four goals are magnanimous problems. By the time I hit seven o'clock, I am attempting to change the world. And I set four major goals to do so. Every time I set a task for my day, it's something I do not know how to do at I said it's a defining moment. I don't set, right? I don't get up and go, okay, I'm going to complete this task. Why would I do that? I just pay somebody else to complete the task. My job ain't even to complete it. That ain't how, that's not how millionaires think. I didn't came here to complete tasks. I came here, if I start something, it gets finished. That don't mean I got to finish it. Let's take Darren's Fiverr example. Start the task, finish it, get it done, do a great version of it. Pay somebody on Fiverr to do it better. So by the time y'all get it, it's already on version 2.0. I'm dropping some nuggets today. No, 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 you good, brother. You good. You good. You right. You try. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying? I mean, Fiverr is a great resource, great tool. Great too. I built half my programming team. I was looking for programmers. 
I couldn't find them. So I just went to five and started establishing relationships. So there, there they go. Antonio, how did you establish a relationship with five with programmers? It's only one way to establish relationship with freelancers. Pay them. <laughs> 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 you want to get somebody's attention? Pay them. Let them complete the project and say, hey, I'm thinking about using you again. And start a conversation. Go ahead, Phil. There you go. I'm going to make a suggestion, and this may not be valid for everybody on the call, but these are what I perceive for people that are involved in Rekeza and encourage the people to be part of the university. These are the income producing activities. Number one, attend and or listen to all calls and classes and practice personal and professional development. Ooh Number two, create, maintain, and grow your candidate list. Number three, practice and invite candidates to enroll in the university. And number four, follow up. Repeat it one more time, Phil. I'm gonna have her write that down so everybody can get it, and that's gonna be like something we we emailing the people on day one. Go ahead, go ahead, Phil. Attend and or listen to all calls and classes. And practice personal and professional development. Number two, create maintain and grow your candidate list. Number three, practice, because I practicing counts and invite candidates to enroll in the university. And number four, follow up. Y'all got it? Copy and paste that to Monica, send it to Deanna. Okay, and as soon as we do our first call, guess what we're going to say? Here's the best way for you to have the most success here in ATS. And there it is, because that was yeah, right that was on good, time. Bill. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. That was extremely good. Now, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You go ahead. Thank you. you. Go ahead. Wrench around, wrench it up. That's very good. Now, what I want to do here is I want to, you know what, I'm not even going to, I'm going to give it to you hard, okay? The next thing I want to talk about is respecting the upward curve. Y'all don't respect this. Well, what's the upward curve? The, 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 let me find a good picture. There we go. Let me see if I can get that. There we go. Share my screen. Here's an upper curve. Yeah, I see them all the time. Right here. These things. These. Effectiveness, time, right? Mm -hmm. But see, <clears throat> this is what. Can y'all see this? Is it? Is it? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk. Let's talk. Y'all be here and give up because here looks too far away. You start a mission and want to be here and give up. I'm not done. You don't start because you don't feel like taking the energy to get here. That's how mostly our workouts go. You start here, but aren't willing to go through the pain that takes you here. And most importantly, for most people on planet Earth, you start at the low part of the curve and you give it your all. And then you look up, you blow it up. You go for a hundred days. Yeah, look at this cursor. Y'all see the cursor? Mm -hmm. You go for a hundred days, you give it your all. 
you pray, you burn incense, and light, smoke, smoke some sage, and do all that stuff. <laughs> and you get it right here. And you go, you know what? I should have been here in that 100 days. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let me do it again, dog. Let me do it again. You go hard for a year. You say, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to. You know, I said something so cold to Deanna this morning. Deanna was so excited about working out. So excited. Oh, oh go ahead, Phil. The curve is actually more like a hockey stick. Where it goes like this mm -hmm. and then it goes up. Yep, absolutely. Because once you get it, once that exponential stuff starts happening, but most people don't get to the exponential. Most people don't get to it. Pay attention. Deanna said something so cold this morning. Deanna was in the car. Deanna said, I'm, 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 I'm so excited to work out. I ain't been this excited to work out in a long time. I looked at it like, you crazy as hell. Right? <laughs> I looked at it. I did. <clears throat> I did. I did. I did. Looked at it. And I said to myself, it's pretty powerful. Do you remember what I told you? I said, we need to lower our expectations. Oh, yeah. Listen to what I told her. You said we need to lower our expect expectations and don't expect to see the results until like the end of this year, beginning of next year. All right. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I told her. This is the first time I put you on the spot. You hit the nail on the head. Look at you. Yeah. Look at you. I told her. We're going to go hard every day. We're not going to look for no results to 2022. Mm -hmm. Man, there's a difference in thinking there. Mm -hmm. yes. We're going to go hard every day with a personal trainer. We know the trainer is an expert. We know the trainer go do their job. You understand? Mm -hmm. We know the trainer going to do their job. But we're not looking for results. If we happen to get the results, though, oops. I don't mind oops in my way to a six pack. I oops my way to a million dollars. I really did. I accidentally got to it. I had no idea. Right? I don't mind oops in my way to a six pack. Why did I say that? Because, Chiquita, you know who killed my forward progress all the time? Me mm -hmm. and my unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. How many of you just like me? You work out once, you go in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fool me now. Don't fool me. You you start getting your sideways on. You, right? <laughs> you jump on the scale. You do all that stuff, and then what happens when you do that for about fifteen days? Ah, this ain't working. I'm not seeing no results anyway. And this is what you're doing. Your body's going through a change, and then you convince yourself it's not working, and you stop. Let me go back to this bell. I mean, let me go back to this. Okay, go ahead. Give me an example. Let me go back to that curve. Because, see, not everybody thinks that way. Some people think how I think. Man, I've been working out for a whole week. I'm just going to eat this cheeseburger. You know what? I'm gonna work it off. Let me add these French fries and this large sweet tea to it. And I've been doing good. I'm eating good and working out. And then like, man. So yours is I don't see nothing, and mine is man. I'm just I worked it off. Let me go get this hamburger. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Monica put in the chat, working out every day isn't good. You need to give yourself a title of recovery. She's absolutely right. I'm saying every day because I'm an everyday type of brother. Right, we following the, the advice of experts, and I don't mean like I'm every day. Let me override the rules. I mean my head only processes do something hard every day. You understand know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't. It doesn't process anything else. It, it doesn't do anything else. It, it has no rest days. That doesn't mean I don't rest. It's just my brain says if I'm gonna drink coffee, I'm gonna drink coffee every day. If I'm gonna smoke weed, I'm gonna smoke weed every day. If I'm gonna be broke, I'm gonna be broke every day. Like whatever I do, all I do to perfection. All or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> when when I was a bum, I was a bum every day. You understand what I'm saying? 
<laughs> for real. Like I, I'm just an everyday type of go hard or go home type of person. So let me show you this curve again. Let me show you this curve again. This is a warning for y'all. Respect the curve. It could, it, you know what? Let, let me, let, I'm going to use Phil example. Phil gave an example about Apple. Took Apple 40 years mm -hmm. to get to this part of their curve. Oh, no, 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 no. 40? Phil, tell us how long it took Apple to get to a trillion dollars and then how long it took them to double it. Took them 40 years to get to a trillion and then 20 months to get to two trillion. All right, let me show y'all something. That on this graph that would be depicted as this. 40 years Apple went to get here. And then 40 months they went from here to here. And 20 months from right here. And 20 months they went from right here to here. Do you have what it takes to keep your dream, Chiquita? For 40 years. Mm. Bah, 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 bah. I got it, coach. I got it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. I've been building this one company since 1996. It finally worked out in 2016. And in 2016, I was not as respected as I am today. In 2017, I was so not respected as I am today. I had to get celebrity clients just for people to see me. Now I'm the celebrity client. Rewind, press play. In 2016, I hit a million bucks, but people couldn't even see me until I got a millionaire. I hear you, brother. <laughs> 96 to 2016 sounds like 20 years. Took me 20 years just to get close enough for somebody to look at Les Brown and say, oh, I think Antonio Coop. But look what I've done over the next five years. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Adrian, come here, Adrian. Come here. You've been wanting this all day. Loved it, loaded time. I had y'all last week split a paper in half. You bifurcated it. On the left side, you put loads. I couldn't stand it. Loretta, Loretta you looking good. All right, then. You don't look like the lady I had envisioned in my head. <laughs> just saw a profile picture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you supposed to have the rollers in your head and and and, the, and sliding your feet and stuff. <laughs> now think about this. I said loathe it. You hate it. Don't want it. You understand what I'm saying? And on the right side, you put loved it. And I had everybody do the exercise. Who has their paper or remember their paper did the exercise? All right, Dawood. Unmute your mic. And I'm about to hear from Dawood and Brittany. Unmute your mic <laughs> and tell us how much in percentage-wise was on the love it side. One. That's a, <laughs> he sounded just like me when I first did it. Just like me. So let me explain the exercise about it. I had everybody do that loved it. If you, you followed your day for a whole There you go. No, I got it. I got it. You followed your day for a whole week. Okay. Followed your day for a whole week and everything you did, you switch over there. Everything that you wrote down. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Hey, wash the clothes. Hey, took a bath. Whatever, whatever you did, right? And for Daoud, he said only 1% went on the right side of the list. When I did my list, you know what? I might be being too kind. Mine was might might be negative one percent. I don't know. <laughs> Mine was bad. I spent most of my week hating myself and didn't even know it till I wrote it down. Ooh. Tell us a little bit about your tell us a little bit about your list, Daoud, and then tell us what you learned. Uh, okay, a little bit about my list. I 
loathe and also it. what you learned from doing it all right uh that i spend a lot of time doing things that i loathe or living in a condition that i loathe that's what i learned from it yeah or living in a condition so he just freed somebody with that <laughs> All right, let me, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't mute your mic. I want somebody else to come on out there and admit with you, I'm currently living in a condition I loathe. Come on, who's brave enough? Who's brave enough? He ain't the only one. Can Doe give us some examples? Is that asking too much? No, no, it's fine. Nah. I can go there. I'm, I'm currently living in a condition with my sister and mother both having COVID, and oh, I hate it. That's right. That's I it. hate it. Right. Yeah, hate it, hate it. So, what's the solution, Antonio? What should I do? Make enough money, well, Antonio. What should I do? Make enough money, get a bigger house. <laughs> 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 if you had everything on your side of the quarantine, it wouldn't be mm -hmm. too bad. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? COVID is out here. You might as well be around COVID rich. Quarantine's been a blessing for me. I hope all, I'm an introvert too, so I hope all y'all stay inside. We can keep it that way. Okay. <laughs> now, who dare say, give us some examples of the conditions. It's just as many, but not conditions, but you know what I'm saying. Whatever you got on your few, list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, living, living with roommates, not having my own apartment at 41 years old, that's like, that's a mind yeah. uh, thing for me. Um, let, let me give you one. Hold on, let me give you one from yeah. my list. Being married to the wrong person. Oh man, that was on my. Go ahead. Oof. Uh, um, that took the wind out of my sails because I still love her. Um, one of the worst things is when I when I visit to go spend time with my son and then I have to leave there. I I, I hate that feeling. Um, okay, so I, on my list, I'm, I'm I'm going back and forth with him so he's not singled out, right? So on my list, it was being married to your own person. He just said his. Another on my list was dropping my kids off at school. Mm. I didn't like that. I hated it. Got on my nerves. It explains why I've been homeschooling my kids for the last six years now. I realized I hate dropping my kids off at school and I hate picking them up. Mm. And I couldn't figure out what I hated. So what do you hate, Antonio? I hated waiting in line. I felt like it was wasting my time. So I don't do that no more. Go ahead. Then. Clocking into a job that I don't really like. Mm, um, mm, mm. I bet he is the only one. Yeah, not having enough money. Um, not having my own place to stay. Um, not having my own wardrobe. My own privacy. Look at that. Look at that. He flipped over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped a few too. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I loathe procrastinating, which is why I try to be on my calls all the time. So it puts my feet to the fire. Um, uh, I, you know, sugar binges. I do that to comfort eat sometimes. Mm. Um, I loathe not having a partner, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, walking past my old apartment. I hate that. I hate oh, that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, that kills okay, me. Hold on right there. There's no, no, no one jumped out here with us. Yeah, yeah. See, this, these are brave people. Me, no, and Dao, we're brave. <laughs> no, so I hate, I hate being in, I hate not being in control of stuff I can't change. Every single thing, almost that walking past apartment can't change that. Yeah. See, see, now, see so I don't, I don't know who's right, but if, 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 if he asks Antonio, what should I do about not wanting to walk past this apartment? What should I do? I'm gonna give them two pieces of advice, say the same thing, same side of the coin. You should ask take, me that, Dawood. Take a different direction. <laughs> that's okay, what, what normal what people do? would do. That's, that's what, what normal people would do. <laughs> okay, nah, no okay, doubt. What should I, I do? What should I do? I I buy the apartment building. Cat dog, and he right, talking right, like, like right, right, right. Buy the apartment building. Two things. Yeah. Write yeah. down what it costs to buy the apartment building. Second thing, buy the apartment building. I'm sorry, Tony. I'm sorry. Nah, that's it. That's what. That's it. That's it. You 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 thinking like me, or I'm thinking like you. If something I'm bothers me, I'm a buy. It. Mm, 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 that's power. 
that, that, see, I was just gonna say, I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about power. If yeah. it takes my, oh, okay, Renita, if it takes my power, I gotta take that back. Y'all heard me? Yeah. I gotta take that back. Not, not me, over my dead body is a whole three blocks gonna make me vibrate incorrectly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna walk by so I'm not I can't I can't since I can't remove the blocks from planet Earth. I guess I gotta buy them. And people say, so I told you in an interview they'd be like, so Tony, what what made you make so much money? Well I was in pain one day and I'll be real. I hated going by where I used to be. Because every time I looked at it, it reminded me of what I used to be. Reverend. And one day I realized ain't no more used to be's. I'm mm-hmm. buying tomorrow every chance I get. Mm-hmm. That's the book title. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Thank you, Dao. Thank you so much. We ain't going to make you say no more. Uh, no, no, unless you want to. No, come on. If you want to. I say you said, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, it's ripping my skin off. I got you. I got you. I hate seeing. And myself hurt to make others happy. Oh, oh, Noah, 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 you are talking in this place. I remember being with someone. I love this girl so much. Y'all ever, y'all ever love somebody you lost you? Am I? Am I? Uh, is this 18 years? 18 years. Uh, all right. There it is. I, I mean, if you listen, if you put it in religious talk, sugar, it was her, huh, God, and anything else. Wow. See, I ain't, I ain't scared to admit it now. I ain't scared to admit it. I'm not scared. Y'all, y'all ain't never put nothing before God. But as for me, <laughs> as for me, you understand. She was God. See y'all, 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 yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't never messed up in your whole life. <laughs> Cause uh, throw these headphones at you. As for me, I made sure that I love this girl so much. Sunday morning, I just laid up with her. Help me, somebody. I felt that, man. <laughs> come on, come on, man. man. I'm come young. On. I felt that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Listen. come on, come on, Joel. Hey. Talk to me. Talk to me, hey, man. Cause I remember when I was in high school and you know, I ain't, I ain't know this girl as long as as y'all knew certain people, but like, you know, that I, I had that feeling for a girl too. Like I even, and I, and I didn't know her that long, but like when like a certain person does make you feel a certain way, it, it, it it's an attachment to it. And, you know, even for this, even for this girl, like I even told her my dreams, I told her like, um where like we would travel to and everything and you know I gave her flowers and you know always would give her attention and I put and even gave her money before and you know uh it's it's crazy because I like I almost G- gave feel, her money he didn't even tie I <laughs> <laughs> brother look I, I, I like it's it's crazy man like I, I can tell you like a lot of, and you know, people say like I'm wise at a young age, but some people don't realize what I even been through. And you know, like God, God, you only get I was a fool, man. You only yeah. get wisdom from losing that. Yeah, I was a fool, fool. I get it. Fool like that. I get it. Everybody, <laughs> Everybody out here has been a fool for quite some time. It's just you know they don't like admitting it. You know what I'm saying? You know, so just give me, give me, give me three. Can I talk? Can I talk? Can I talk on. one time? Come on, man, it's on you. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Oh, I had a relationship of seven years. Um, I met this girl at like 19. You know what I'm saying? Fresh out of college and all that. I met her. Um, I came from a, you know what I'm saying? A, a both parent home. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like I had a, you know what I'm saying? A fair life. You know, a fair childhood. You know what I'm saying? I. You know, so I met this girl. She was from the projects, you know. I didn't know that when I met her. So, you know what I'm saying? Over time, I started falling in love with her, you know what I'm saying? And right. me being a man, I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? I moved in with her. 
You know what I'm saying? I wasn't kind of used to that situation, you know what I'm saying? So I dealt with it, you know what I'm saying, in that way. And I, I, I accepted her way of living to being, you know what I'm saying, with being in love with her. Excuse my words, wow. you know, I'm nah, trying to get good, it out. Man. But, you know. Good, man. Take your time. And um, so during that time, of course, the time, like, I end up meeting this 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 little guy. His, I stayed in an apartment complex, and they had a high school, like, like right, right next door, and a guy I didn't know he was homeless. He was snoring one year, and he was sleeping in his car. You know what I'm saying? So one day I just come out my come out the apartment. I seen a little guy sleeping in his car. You know what I'm saying? So I asked my girlfriend at the time, like, do she know the guy? She was like, no. So I went and tapped at the window. I asked the little guy, like, why are you sleeping in your car? He was like, I'm in school. You know what I'm saying? I'm in, I'm in school. My parents kicked me out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sleeping in an apartment so I can go to school the next morning. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, well, I went back in the house. I talked. To Excuse me. I talked to my girlfriend and she was like, well, what you want to do? I'm like, I'm going to go with faith with this. I'm going to I'm just going to bite the little guy in. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to sleep in his car. Keep on going. Keep on going. Did he lose reception? Oh, that was getting good. OK, we're going to wait till he come back. Oh, that was getting good. <laughs> Oh, hello, y'all hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Hear me? We got you now. Yeah, we was waiting. Okay. We was waiting. Come okay, on. Okay, look. Okay, so I told him with all the payment, like just go to school, just stay in school. That's good enough payment for me. So that was the deal. He finished school. He ended up going to college. Man, him build a good relationship. You know, a good relationship. He was with me for like until seven years. Like seven years, man. Him was strong. So like, and during this time, he was with me. You know, he was with me all these seven years. So he knew. He was with me and my girlfriend all this time. So basically he knew he knew me as, as well as he knew her, you know. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? Over the course of the years, he was around doing all the fussing, the fighting, the good, the bad. So he knew everything, you know. So of course the time he's been staying with us, he ended up finding the little girlfriend. I, matter of fact, he ended up this little girl in an apartment complex. She kind of liked him, you know. So I kind of matched them up with each other, you know what I'm saying? Kind of did a little match deal with him. I did set that up for him and they, it kind of went smooth. You know what I'm saying? But I still winged him as a brother. And like three years ago, me and my my first, um, the mother of my kids, the first, my first um, child, you know what I'm saying, kid's mother, she, she kind of, oh man, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's kind of emotional time, thing. Man. I'm trying Take to. Your time, Take your time. <laughs> but she kind of, so I guess on the course of me and her fell off. And I had the guy, he was still staying with me all these years. And as the course of me and my girl falling off, he knew, you know what I'm saying? He kind of snaked up on me and he knew in the time of me and her falling apart, he knew what to tell her to comfort her, you know? Yeah, and he came in in our time of despair and came in and snaked up on it, you know, mm-hmm. snaked in up on me and went and came. I, I feel like all to say, I feel like during the seven years, this probably been going on and I was, you know, I was the fool yeah. of it. You know what I'm saying? And all to say is that's why I said, like, to make other people happy, you know what I'm saying? I, I get the, yeah. you know, I get the backlash every time, you know, every like, time. and I'm still trying to bounce back from that, man. Like, it's, that's like a devastating thing, like, to for me to, like, I was being a, I feel like I was being a good person through the whole thing, you know, and yeah. to get that, like, the payoff is to find out my, you know what I'm saying? A woman I was yep. with for seven years was sleeping with my, you know what I'm saying? They're to, and actually, like, right now, they're together right now, and they have five kids together. Oh, they together. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, they're together. together. So that takes yeah, me, like, man. that makes me think, yeah, man, like, so that's what I battle, you know? I battle that kind of stuff, man. It's, you know. No doubt. I'm playing no tug of war with, my, with myself right now, you know? it's. Mm-hmm. No, I got you. I got you. Got you. I ain't gonna leave you out there alone by yourself. The same, almost same situation with me. Y'all ready? Same situation. Love this girl. Love the love the love. I don't want my man out here by himself. Worshiped her. Everything. Then she slept with my brother. Oh. Oh, man. <sighs> I married her and everything. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Me and my brother don't talk to this day. 
<laughs> ain't nothing to talk about. I ain't but, mad. but look, but look, but me and that guy, and, it, and, and ever since that came about, I still, I've been the bigger person because I, st- I have mm-hmm. kids with her. So, you know, mm-hmm. I still have to be around them, you know, yep. and, it, and it's like, it, op- it reopened wounds when I come around and I, you know, and it'd be certain when my kids come around, like they'll, like my son, sometimes he'll catch it and he'll apologize sometimes. He'll cop the dude name is DJ and he'll come up to me. He don't do it on purpose. My son will be like, DJ, and he'll catch you like, daddy, I apologize for that. He like, why this gotta be like this though? It's confusing on to me. You know, like and now I can't even That's I can't it. even explain it to my son, you know, like it's yeah, man. Now like, it, is oh. it is. Now it is what it is. It is what it is. I went yeah. the whole time I knew I three years. I tried to I tried to make up to my brother for what he did. Kept it in. I did. I did. I did everything because you know, because you get so, you know, you, you know, the Bible says, come on, help me somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Trying to be the bigger yeah. person, just like my man Noah. Yeah. Trying to be the bigger person. And then so now I got a new, got a new lady. And then my my brother slipped up and said something. And it made me realize. I'm on two percent, y'all. I might, I okay. might hang up. I'm on two percent. <laughs> okay, bro. All right, all right, man. All right, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate you. Should have sometimes. Right now, got... I'm getting on the charter right now. Okay, good, 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 good. Listen, listen. Should have sometimes. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, sometimes you got to realize. Sometimes you got to realize that some people just don't love you. Yeah, they 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 don't love you. You know what I'm saying? He slipped and said something and was bad to me one day. And you, you, you don't even uh, bring her around to have her talk to me. That's disrespectful. Interesting that you would say that because he don't know. To this day, he still don't know that I know. Still don't know that I know. How did I find out? She told me. How did, how did she tell me? She mad at me. She mad at me. She told me right after. She told me right. This is 2006. She told me right after. Taquita, you know what I'm talking about. She called me sorry. I ain't blank. Mm-hmm. It was 2005, actually. I ain't blank. I'm a sorry man. Uh-huh. And that's why I'm... Yo, uh-huh. Yo, brother. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh... <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Damn. That's, <laughs> cold. that's, cold. Yeah. that's how I found out. That's how I found out. That's how I found out. Just like that there. Yeah, but and look where you at now. You understand? Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so think about this here. I love this girl. You know, like man, you can't, Zaquita, you can't, you, you you can't get past this kind of love. This that love where you don't love yourself, you love them. You understand? That's that love up there, y'all. That's. It ain't any good up there. I'm just saying. That's when you're really, really tripping, right? <laughs> you're really, really stepping outside yourself. You're beside yourself. You're beside. And I just don't want no out there to be out, be out there by yourself, right? You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. And my brother slipped in anger and said that. So, oh, so you trying to get at the new one? You know what I'm saying? You ain't even bring up. Oh, mm. you won't go. You won't go two for two. Okay, okay. So I left and no, I got no beef for my brother. He for this to this day, he hate me. See, we didn't grow up together. I didn't meet my brother, I was 14. I remember I'm homeless, right? I mean, I'm, I'm adopted. I didn't meet my brother till I was 14. I got adopted. I met my brother, <clears throat> and my brother got the same dad. But the way it go is my dad never raised my brother. So he had dad. And the first time. <clears throat> that my brother, he came to the house. This is this is what I'm told through him. Says, uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking for an Antonio Smith Sr. And they said, who are you? He said, I'm Chris, I'm his son. Just real, real details, real name. I'm just telling you what it is. And my grandmother, the rest of the soul, the nicest person on planet Earth. She slammed the door in his face. <laughs> she ain't know what to do. <laughs> she ain't know what to do. Slam the door in his face. Slam the door in the face. Whoop, right there, right? Then she had to open the door back up, right? But my brother never forgot that, right? So he don't like my grandmother. You, you know what I'm saying? He don't like my grandmother. He don't like his grandmother, right? All this stuff like that. Slam the door in the face. 
She's nice. I mean, what you do? You drop that ball, right? What you do? Sit, sit on the porch. And the best that I could make of it is, since he had to grow up fatherless, you don't like my daddy. And since he can't do nothing to him because he in jail, might as well do something to me. There is nothing on planet Earth that I'm ever going to do to make my brother stop hating his daddy, to make him stop trying to take it out on me. I can't do nothing. I can't. I ain't mad, but I learned a few lessons. I wanted to be like him so bad, y'all, my big brother. Oh, I wanted to be like him so bad. I did. So I ain't meet him. Let's see, he was 14, so that made me, no, I was 14, so that made him 19. He went to the army. I went to the army. Because I, I grew up without a father, right? Now all of a sudden I got this big brother. We look just alike. We both look like I got doggone daddy. Okay, he graduated number one in his class. All the girls like him because he's, he's that guy. You know what I'm saying? He got a little perfect little dolphin teeth, you know. You know they 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 live they 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 like this big, uh, no no gap. You can't even floss. They don't even nothing get in, nothing even get in between his teeth, nothing get in between his teeth. He's got the whole firstborn child genetics, right? Everything. He's cool. I want all that. He 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 he's Dwayne he he he's Dwayne Wayne in the eighties world. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a different world. You know what I'm talking about. The glasses flipped up. Yes. Yeah, everybody want to be the way way. Y'all don't know nothing about that. You young folk. You young folk, okay? All that. He went for computer programming. Guess what I did? Went for computer programming. Wanted to be like him. So when he did it, guess what I did? Denied that he did it, even though I knew he did it. Why? Because I couldn't lose my wife and my brother at the same time. Just keep it real. I'm all, I'm all the way 100 real. My brain couldn't reconcile losing them both at the same time. So I let go of the wife, kept my brother. Me and the ex-wife, we cool to the day now. We 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 cool. She 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 she's still going through it. <laughs> Ain't leveled up yet. Still going through it. Well, she leveled up, but her her pick is still broke. You understand? She she left me. Two days later, it was a dude. They still together, but this dude is that dude. Two days later, same dude. Dude still dude, dude got six felonies. I don't even know how you walk in the streets. I'm not even lying. Not even lying. You check me out. That is when you spend a whole relationship with somebody you're sleeping with and somebody that's blood thicker than water. I need you to get that for nearly a decade, the two biggest relationships in my life was on my loathed list and I wouldn't admit it to myself. That's why I brought that up. Imagine waking up every day, knowing that you're gonna be disappointed by the person you love and you accept that as this is what love is. Chris said, I can't do that, that's self-destruction. You're right. But I did it and I did it and I did it and backed it up with scripture. Oh, <laughs> I did it and had clever scriptures for it. What greater love than this? <laughs> Man laid down his life for his friend. Yeah.
Yeah, I did it. Listen, sometimes we stay in toxic stuff and we let our religious inaccurate beliefs keep us there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got 10 minutes left i got 10 minutes left <laughs> man no you very welcome man he said thank y'all for listening need to get it off his chest i'm glad you did man yeah. glad you did yeah you know no and this is the first time yeah no doubt no doubt this is the first time i ever admitted right that my ex-wife slept with my brother i ain't never said that out loud but i ain't want him to be out there with him by himself you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real talk with the whole soul food situation. You know what I'm saying? Because my brother was cousin Faith. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I just, I just need you to get that we place ourselves in situations, and then what do we do as humans? Because let me tell you the powerful thing about being human: you can always adjust. And boy, did I know how to adjust to dying. I knew how to adjust to dying. If you think this ain't you, let me describe what dying was like. And if anything I say you can relate to, feel free to shout or feel free to hide. But if it hits you, old folk in Texas say you throw a rock in the crowd. One that holler got hit. So I'm gonna throw a rock in the crowd. If you holler, you got hit. You understand? I was never my real personality around my wife. Holla. Okay, there you go. Oh, man. Got, got, got me one hollering. Wow. Got me one, not just that. Not just that. Not just that. I let her physically and emotionally abuse me. Holla. Come on. All right, all right. I ain't done. I ain't done. I ain't done. I never kept my facial hair intact or my clothes the way that I should keep them. Come on. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying. Uh huh. <laughs> See? See? All right. I'm just telling you. I stay wrinkled, hygiene stayed poor. You know what I'm saying? You know, wash it right there, but you, 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 you don't keep it the way you keep it. How you gonna, how you gonna look good when you don't feel good? Yeah. You know, yeah, but not just that. Let me tell you about my work life. I was, I was the life of the party. No, I was told, see, this is how it works, Queen. For me, since I couldn't live at home, yeah. I live that work. <sighs> People would say all the greatest things about me at work. But see, it wouldn't be that I created terrible things at home. It's since I only ever heard terrible things at home. I had to be the opposite of that at work just to prove to myself that I wasn't as bad as she said I was. Mm. See, when you're getting hurt that much, you forgive so easy. I bet you right now, Noah still know how to forgive like that. I bet you right now. You, you can do the worst thing to him right now. He's still going to eat that. Now he's going to disconnect. But he still and does. I hate myself for that. There you go. See? I hate myself for that. Yeah, buddy. Y'all hear him? Yeah. When you there, you learn how to take mud and filth and make it look good on you. I'd be happy all day. Absolutely. Yep, you're right, Grace. Absolutely wasn't thinking about it. As soon as that key came out of my pocket, my whole mood changed. Cause I, come on. <laughs> Real talk. Cause I knew I was walking back into slavery. Mm. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. So if I hit you with any of that, you too. Nah, 
it's, it's me, you, know, and Dawood. How about that? Know about it. Some of y'all in marriages right now, you done convince yourself that relationship good. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You just good at dying. <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy, Antonio? Come on, and I've never come been on, married man. before, but um, I want to say this real quick. Like Les Brown even said it. He said, uh, no one wants to be the first to say goodbye. He said it in one of his videos on there, but it was crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How we keep ourselves in situations. Right. Yeah, that's what we do, Brittany. I forgot to get you earlier, so you can come on here now. And I, 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 I just want to hear anything you got to say, right here. Yeah, buddy, you unmute your mic if you can, and just, just holler at me. I want to hear what you got to say. Did you say me, Brittany? Yes, sure did. Oh uh, no, I was just listening to y'all, and I was thinking to myself, I miss part of the lesson, like how, like when I was just hearing what. Day Dayud was saying, I was like, damn, like he kept it all the way, just put it all out there. I was so yep, focused on the things that I loved more. So my loved it side was bigger. But as he was talking, I realized how many things I didn't pay attention to that I, I do loathe, you know? So I feel like I need to go back and do that again. Yeah, yeah. Do your list again and give it to me next week. I want to hear all about it. I don't I know if I'm going to be as open as y'all, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, Brittany, tell me about your list. It was good. <laughs> what happened in it happens. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Nah, I'm not mad at you. Hey, you well, what's her name? Brittany? Place. Go ahead, What's no. her name? Yes, Brittany? What's her name? Yes, Brittany? Brittany, sometimes mm -hmm. you got to drop your mm -hmm. ego to see the truth, sweetheart. Yeah, buddy. No, I'm working on it. it. I'll few things like that have been standing out to me about like people sharing their stories and stuff and I see the what they get um from it and how they can help other people yeah. but sometimes I feel like I've already been there so I try not to like dwell on the things that have held me back you know I can dig it yeah I can dig it I can dig it yeah yeah I can dig it I can dig it this I just I thank God for the Noahs and the Dawoods because if they don't say something See, somebody got healed through them talking. Yeah. Yeah. Because you was talking to yourself because they were talking out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, same for me, same for me. You're right, you're right. I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling y'all. Yeah, I'm telling y'all. It's, it's, it's one thing, my biggest problem was, see, I grew up without parents. I got adopted at 14. I grew up homeless. So my biggest problem that always stayed with me <clears throat> was my mama didn't love me, so can't nobody else love me. So I went out there looking for people who was not going to love me. And I went out there and said, Chiquita, I need you to love me, but don't love me. Wow. So I desperately wanted her to love me, but if she tried, I'd push her away. Because how can Jerron love me when I don't love me? But see, it was never me. It was always me, but that ain't how I processed it. I was literally looking to die. Literally. I just got really good at pretending I was alive. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You go to the club, you seven shots deep before you even get to the club. I need some real folk. I need, just, just, just give me one real folk. I, I end the class. I just need one, one real folk that you know what I'm saying. Before you play basketball, you smoke seven squares. I need some, I need some real hood folk. Had to. Had to. Had to. Cause my brain wouldn't shut up. You understand? Brain wouldn't shut up. I need a vodka to tell it to be quiet. Now, Tyranny, you went to the military. Don't fool me now. Just, just, you just, um, just unmute your mic. You went to the whole military. You never drank. Is that what I'm supposed to believe? Because that's exactly what they teach us to do. Drink and kill people. That's it. <laughs> and play spades. And play spades. All right? <laughs> Let me slay this play. 
you got to update the systems around y'all. You feel me? From Sydney, my man, pleasure to meet you. Noah, pleasure to meet you. Uh, Loretta, all of you. Just, just, just pay attention and we out of here, man. Listen. Same here, my brother. No doubt, no doubt, King, no doubt. On some real talk, I hated myself, but didn't know I hated myself. Yes. On my loaded, loved it list, I should have put myself on the load side. And that's real talk. That's real talk. Because the only way I kept doing stuff, the only way my list was 99% hate, is because I hated myself. And I'm gonna tell you why I hated myself. <laughs> Because I want to end the class that way. I hated myself because I knew I was self sabotaging. And I knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew I was self sabotaging. And I knew I was under my potential. So you don't, you don't become like Noah, Daoud, and myself. See, they're they going to be super wise. Only reason I'm wise is because I've taken some L's. You understand what I'm saying? You don't become like us. You don't openly talk in front of people. We don't give a damn. You're going to say what you're going to say anyway. It ain't the first time. <laughs> <laughs> ain't the first time somebody had talked about us. At this point, we're numb to it. We're going to get our healing whether you think we should get it here or not. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I knew this for sure. I knew for sure how great I was. And I always turned down the volume of my greatness so other people can be comfortable. Real talk. I was so great that I knew whenever I was myself, I intimidated people. And I kept picking the people who wanted me to be stupid so they could love me. Until I fixed that, I couldn't fix me. My challenge to all of you, <clears throat> yeah, challenge be done. My challenge to all of you, examine where you at truly in life. Because all of you are Noah, all of you are Antonio, all of you are Daoud right now, may not be in your marriage, but your business show look like our relationships, don't it? Oh yeah, your business look like Noah, look, look like my brother. Oh no, oh no, don't you sit up here and be all, my life is good, your business suck. <laughs> so why, right, while we talking about personal, you done fooled around, got the personal life together, but your entrepreneurial life look like our relationship life. And you need to admit some hard stuff over there. Maybe you shouldn't be running your business. Maybe your business problem is you number one. Maybe you need to hire a number one or hire a number two that's strong and you just lead them with your vision. Some of y'all businesses is terrible because you're not a good CEO. You're a good visionary. You're just not a good business leader. Just because you're a husband don't make you a leader. <laughs> Antonio T. Smith Jr., oh, you can't play it better. You can't <laughs> dominate. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow <laughs> for love you, our love Friday you. morning meeting. Yeah, <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate y'all. Especially Noah, thank you so much, King. You 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 showed up today, thank man. You, Noah. Great. Yes, I look forward to seeing you. Yes, Sydney, that's the second time showing up too. And everybody, thank y'all so much, man. Y'all get out here and have a good day, and drink them if you got them, but be responsible. Right. Love y'all. Men, thank you for sharing tonight. That was really yes. really good. Yeah, it was good for us you. women to hear you share. Thank mm -hmm. you. And Antonio, Thank you. that's yeah. a great bird. Mm -hmm. I really me. enjoyed y'all, man. I really enjoyed y'all. Yes. Appreciate y'all. Thank you so Love much. You guys. All right, everybody. All right. Love, Love you more. Bless us. Love you too. Love you more.